When you turn on or flip a switch in your home, what happens? If you paid the bill, the light goes on. But did you ever think what powers that electricity, where the energy comes from? I really didn't. I was an engineer, an aerospace engineer, for over 30 years in the aerospace division at Pratt Whitney. And we moved. We moved technology forward in sometimes very daunting areas. But then it was compelling and it was enjoyable. However, in 2008, I had the opportunity to come back to, to FAU, my birthplace. I came back to lead the program in ocean energy, a new compelling frontier. And we've moved forward. If you look at the Florida, or the Florida portfolio for energy, it's mainly made up of fossil fuels. It is a little bit uh, invested with also uh, nuclear power, but this is typical of most of the states around the US. And for Florida, fossil fuels are all imported. So why are we just continuing to look at this as the portfolio for energy in the future? What about the next generation and the generations after that? We believe at FAU that we need to look at many alternatives for that capability. Renewables are one answer. And in the renewables, we look at solar, wind, and biomass. And they're the most uh, economically available and commercially viable right now. But they're not the only ones. And they have their own challenges. Challenges of intermittency and challenges of lower power density. And in some places around the world and in the US, they're not readily available. So they're a solution, not the solution. If we look at the world today and look at ocean energy or ocean currents, they offer another solution. The oceans cover more than 70% of the Earth's surface. And studies back in 2010 said that more than 39% of the US population lived along the coastline. And by 2020, that's expected to grow to 47%. Significant increase, but that also uh, enforces the fact of locally available resource. Now, if you look at the oceans, as I said, there are a number of areas that have been worked on over the years. And if you look at the ocean currents and specifically, they cover the oceans around the world in every hemisphere. Ocean currents are wind power, water, driven water, that flows along the eastern side of the ocean basins, and then with the rotation of the Earth, it's intensified by the time it reaches the western boundaries. In Florida alone, we have waves and we have tides, but they're not the strength of the ocean in Florida and along the eastern seaboard. Starting in South Florida, we have the Gulf Stream, one of the strongest currents in the world and it flows all the way up to North Carolina and makes its way then eastward to northern England and the northern European borders. However, it's a challenge. Marine engineers and scientists will say that to develop the ocean devices that can sustain and survive in the ocean, it's a harsh environment. It's an environment that has densities of, of water that are a thousand times greater than air. It's an environment that also provides great depths that you have to be able to manage to anchor systems in the water. And for ocean currents, those are only, well, I would say not only, but they are at least 10 kilometers from shore. So transmission is going to be a challenge. But that being said, it's not daunting. It, if you look at history and you look at what we've done in the world today, we've been able to build the Great Wall of China. We've been able to 
survive and move into the ocean with some of the submersibles and being able to do investigative work for our environments and medicines from the sea, and we're using them today to do search and rescue. And we've also been able to land on the moon. So it's not unachievable, it's exciting, and it provides us an opportunity to move forward into another frontier. So how do we take what we've learned over the centuries and apply it in the future? Apply it to ocean energy power conversion. First of all, the solution has to be simple. It has to be viable. So remember when you uh, turned on that light switch? The light came on, but it better stay on. So in other words, it has to be available. It has to be continuous, reliable, and consistent. Also, when you think about the aspects of safety, safety is not just of the devices and the workforce, but safety is also the environment. We care about the environment. We care about sea turtles, for example. There are endangered species. We protect them along the coastlines of not only Florida, but around the world. So the environment is extremely important to understand the interactions or the interdependencies between marine life, the rotating devices, and the resource. Besides that, we not only care about the safety, then we go into the economics. Why is that important? Cost effectiveness is going to be paramount in being able to be into the commercial world, to be able to be a part of that portfolio of energy. So the simpler the solution, the less costly it will be to design it, build, install, and maintain. And there are companies like Anadarko Petroleum that today have already moved from the concept phase and are beginning to test and tow test their devices. So what is FAU? What's their role in this? The center. FAU is providing the opportunity and the ability for researchers and graduate students to work in the realm of tool development, of being able to work on analyzing solutions and doing that important resource development of both the Gulf Stream, the ocean current, and also of the environment and those interactions that I was speaking of a few minutes ago. We're also developing that future workforce. We're graduating students that are already going into the marine energy world today. And we've invested heavily in research for over 50, 55 students. And some of those students are coming from around the world. And we've been able to move forward in the areas of research in collaboration with universities and laboratories around the world. But in, in addition to that, we've developed a curriculum because we need to get marine energy into the vernacular at the K through 12 level to be able to show students and inspire them for the future. So that being said, what does that mean for you? How can we engage you? We can engage you in, in three different ways. Your talent, your expertise, your time. Those are the first way, that's the first way. We have volunteers who are coming, st uh, seven uh, students are coming from around the world to volunteer their time this summer because they want to know more about ocean energy and they want to be involved. So we need your talent and your time. Secondly, we need your expertise from the standpoint of being able to reach out to the community, engage the public perspective, engage the uh, government speakers at all levels, local, state, federal, and globally, to encourage them to put ocean energy on the radar screen. And thirdly, we need your resource. Your time, your talent, your resource, your funding. Companies like Crowd Energy here have already been out and soliciting information or funding for their device. And it's working because they are now able to move to the next phase of development. 
So with that, I invite you to join us, power the world by the ocean, and be a part of the blue energy future.